thank you very much, Doug. Thank you for that that presentation. Looking forward to something that we're all going hopefully going to be using in the near future. I will now just take you back a little bit to look at how archaeology was looking last year. This is normally at this point I can tell you that the state of the archaeological market report for last year has been published and is available at. It's not quite out yet. Maybe, maybe next week. So here, here are highlights from that report, which is not quite available. Um, I made indirect reference to some of the headlines yesterday. There, these results from financial year 22-23, so from April 22 to March 23. At the top in all of archaeology in UK, and this is commercial plus uh, curatorial plus academic plus other, make a 4,851 people working estimate. And 85% of them are working in commercial archaeology. Uh, sorry, 85% of the people working in commercial archaeology have permanent contracts. And of people working in commercial archaeology, 85% are from UK. That's a figure, of course, we've been tracking for a few years to look at what the effect of Brexit has been. So still 10% of archaeologists are EU citizens. In that year, Salaries typically rose by at least inflation, if not more, but our charge out rates did not rise by typically rise by inflation. And overall, the sector reported an, as calculated an aggregate profit level of 3.1%, and the, the figure from the year before had been 7%. In that year before, also we had salaries going up by at least inflation and charge out rates not. So we've been chasing our own tails for at least two years as profit profitability drops. The average turnover per member of staff went up a lot, but don't forget, yeah, we had 10, 11% inflation in, in the year. So average turnover per member of staff, 63,000 pounds. And that means that the total value of commercial archaeology in that year was a little bit more than 300 million pounds. So total numbers of, of people. There we go. The this is the, the respondents to the survey. If you remember, the survey went to FAME members plus CIFA registered organizations. So not everyone answered and we extrapolated, but these are figures back from the responses we got. Typically, the mean size of a, a company is, average size is 78 members of staff. And there at the bottom is the total numbers of people working in commercial archaeology stretching back over the years. 4,851 last year, having gone up by 1.1% on the year before. I think it is nearly flatlining because people were having lots of troubles with recruitment too. And then that's how it looks when we compare things with every sector in archaeology. We end up with a total of an estimated 6,737 people, of which 72% work in commercial archaeology. When we look at that as a more usable graph over time of this is everyone working in archaeology, not just in commercial archaeology. So a big slump there back uh, following on from 2007, 2008 that never got better for years and years and years came bouncing back and looks like it's plateauing perhaps. Uh, again, the nationalities figure, 85% UK, 10% other states, 4% uh, EU, 4% elsewhere, 1%. Uh, rounding error. And this over time has, has begun to kind of also begun to kind of stabilize, I think. Turnover per company. Here we go. That's the, the figure. We, again, not every company reported everything, but the figures that we got from the 24 companies that did, the mean figure was a and the, uh, the middle figure, half the companies reported turning over more than six and a half million pounds and half less. And so when we multiply up the amount that is calculated as being the turnover per person by the number of people, we end up with a number which we're calling the value of the sector. And that's, that's how it looked last year, 309 million up from 268 million year before. So there is real growth as well as there being 11% inflation in there. Not much. Um, very interestingly, okay, in yesteryear, residential development always used to be the biggest sector for us. And then in the last few years, transport has come roaring up, roaring down the tracks. 
And then there, back in 22, 23, I mean, thinking back to this, this being a time of various economic difficulties, and as I said yesterday, it was a year of three prime ministers and four chancellors of the Exchequer, and I challenge you all to remember Nadim Zahawi, who was one of those chancellors. Uh, it, was also an, it was also a time when an awful lot of major transport projects were, at, if not being cancelled, were at least being put on hold. So transport dropped down in comparison with res residential development, but very interesting to see how, how much more important energy had at last become in, in the relative amounts that was of revenue being generated. And this is energy, this is primarily solar, but other renewables and a lot of nuclear work. So here's what we thought the, the reported average, the mean change to charge out rates, 7.9% does not compare well to 10.1% inflation. And the increase in salary levels, well, again, the, here we didn't, we didn't ask for precise numbers. We asked for more than inflation, less than inflation, a lot more than inflation. We ended up with 80% identifying that overall salary levels rose by inflation or more. So 80% of respondents saying salaries up by more than inflation, typically charge out rates less than inflation, up by less than inflation. And this then means that the profit figures are not as impressive as they might be. And it turns out overall, all the, the firms that we had the responses from, we aggregate that and we work out an aggregate, typical, an aggregate sectoral profit level of 3.1%, which is far from fabulous. And uh, when you look back at, at previous years, it has been yeah, declining from declining from a not great position that was looking was beginning to look a bit better two years ago and everyone was asked a standard question do you think in the coming year things will get better or get worse and we ask this every year and a hugely clear majority 70 percent to 26 percent thought the market would get worse looking at that as the graph over time the, the lines where it's pu pushing up in black are years where we, where we, we thought the next year was going to be better. Down in, in red, we thought it would get worse. And remember, looking back at the very recent history, there, there, there it's uh, 2020, 29, 2020. Okay, we were gathering data a little bit retrospectively and people saying, oh yes, of course, the day before the pandemic, I knew that next year would be dreadful. But the pandemic when it came along and it was awful and then actually we were getting through the pandemic reasonably well and we were, by the time we were asking for data as we began to come out we were feeling really much more positive and then now we were out and we were back in the post-pandemic hangover uh, feelings about the future were, were and the other political matters and Boris uh, we were feeling much less positive about this so also asked questions about uh, various other perceptions, and this was a, always a key one, asking the question, what, or do you agree or disagree with the perception that a shortage of heritage staff in local planning authorities is a major constraint on heritage projects? Yes, most people said, yes, it is a problem. And every time we've asked this question, we've said, yes, this is a problem. Local authorities need more staff capacity to be able to support the work that we are doing. And the, and I'm delighted that Chair of Algeo UK is able to sit here and, and uh, see everyone encouraging him and saying, go on, do more, John, please. No, but but, but this, is, this is a problem, especially at a time when local authorities are reducing commitment to staffing and capacity within local authorities. We, we do have uh, figures for local authority services in England and now in Scotland that show the, a decrease in the number of people working in those, those services in this year. And the last perception were, question was about, have you had vacancies that you considered to be difficult to fill? And yeah, people find it difficult to fill vacancies. So we'd reached a point where organic growth is becoming difficult and has slowed down and it is difficult to hire. So we are presented with a, did just, this is just to help you realize that it, when you think about these things that you're finding difficult, it is not just your company, these are sector-wide experiences that we are all finding it difficult to hire and difficult to grow in that sense. So the whole report will be out and published very soon, next, next few weeks. There, there is 
more to explore there when you get there, but those, that's, that's a, an introduction to the headlines. Thank you to our funders and supporters there, funded by FAME from our reserves, by CIFA and by Historic Environment Scotland. Thank you very much.